Alrighty guys, so let's talk about the Nutritarian Challenge results. So this should be um, actually somewhat exciting for some of you who haven't tried anything like this before. It's actually, um, this is one of the ones I would recommend people try. So let's talk about this. All right, so on the 10 and 20 challenge, the first thing that we're gonna talk about here is the quantity of food. Quantity of food being how much are you allowed to eat and is there restrictions on it and whether or not that's something that um, you can you as an I huh, could deal with. Um, and so for this challenge, I particularly gave this actually five stars. Um, quantity of food. So yes, the recipes were very specific about how many servings each recipe made. And yes, when you go to make oatmeal, using two tablespoons of oat, oats to make your um, blueberry cobbler doesn't seem like a whole lot of food. However, um, there was a caveat to this that made it completely doable. And it did say that so long as you didn't eat between meals, so long as you ate at meal times, you could eat whatever it was that you were planning for that particular meal. You could eat that, plus an unlimited amount of, say, vegetables. You could have a piece of fruit with every meal. You could have, um, like, beans and legumes and other things. There was a lot of extra added that you could put into a meal so you didn't have to be hungry. You could eat until you were full. Um, you just weren't eating maybe the more nutrient dense, not nutrient dense, you weren't eating the more calorically dense foods, a lot of that. So in terms of quantity of food, there really was never a time that I was hungry unless I didn't pack myself enough food and that's totally on me, not on the diet. So quantity of food wise, really and truly, um, this is something you guys could try and not be worried about being hungry, so long as you're willing to eat more vegetables, which is kind of a whole food plant-based idea anyway, so eat more vegetables, eat more fruit. So yeah, this actually worked out really well. I would say quantity of food, guys, you won't be hungry, so no worries about that. All right, and the next measure of success for this particular uh, challenge was the uh, quality of food. So whether or not the food quality was something that I would find appealing. Um, I gave it four stars. Um, it did not get five stars for only one reason. <laughs> A nutritarian lifestyle doesn't really include white rice. And I get that, um, I totally understand that. White rice is not super nutrient dense. It's not um, really high on the level of um, providing you lots of phytochemicals and phytonutrients and all the things that are important in a nutritarian lifestyle. Um, but I missed rice a lot. So in terms of the quality of food, you did you could have like sweet potatoes and that was good. I didn't miss not being able to have a white potato at all. But you guys know me, I don't really care for white potatoes anyway, so it's really not, that wasn't that big of a deal to me. Um, and then there weren't any vegetables that I couldn't have. Um, there weren't any fruits that were off limit, although he did want you to have more berries than other things. Um, so white rice kind of kind of is a killer for me in terms of um, the quality of food. I really, really like to have vegan sushi on occasion, and I like to have just rice with some veggies and like a little bit of sauce on it. Um, so yeah, I, I kind of missed that. That was kind of one of those things that I was like, I don't know about this in terms of quality of food because I, I missed that. So if you don't love something that's not super low on the nutrient density <laughs> scale, um, this might be like the absolute perfect thing for you to do. It's actually really quite easy to follow. Um, and quality of food, I mean, you're eating legumes and you're eating beans and you're eating greens and you're eating onions and mushrooms and berries and seeds, lots of really healthy food. Just happens to be that I missed my rice. So that's why I gave this one four stars. Okay, so effectiveness of this plan or weight loss. Um, again, if I, you don't lose any weight, I give it a star. If you lose half a pound a week, you get it two stars and it goes up a half a pound from there. So I did end up losing just over five pounds when I averaged it out from the beginning three days to the last four days actually I measured it at. Um, so that's three and a half stars. That's actually probably the best that I've done on any of the plans that I've done so far. So that's, I mean, that's really awesome to be honest with you. Um, so, if you're looking for something that you think that you don't mind a little bit of a challenge,
but you do think is going to be effective, I think that this would be a really good plan. Three and a half stars, that's pretty good. That's, um, you know, losing between four and six pounds a month is, um, I know there's lots of plans out there that say that you can lose lots and lots of weight. Well, if you're already eating relatively healthy, it is a lot harder to lose the weight. And if you are accustomed to eating um, vegetables and fruits anyway, you know, your body kind of goes, well, this really isn't a whole lot different, even though you're eating more nutrient-dense food. So losing the weight is a little bit more difficult. So I think that losing five pounds in a month is phenomenal. I'm super excited about that. I think that was great. And that would be one of the reasons I would highly recommend this challenge to somebody. All right, so the next factor would be ease of diet. How easy was this to actually follow? So I gave this three and a half stars because the first 20 days of the challenge were actually somewhat challenging for me, and then the last 10 days were really pretty easy. So what I mean by that is when I had to follow the recipes that were being given um, as part of the challenge, it was pretty difficult for me because there were a lot of times, like I made stuff that I really enjoyed. So the taco, the nutritarian tailgate chili, that was really good. Um, some of the different oatmeal based breakfasts were really, really good and salads and that kind of stuff was awesome. But at the same time, there were other flavors in there that I just didn't really enjoy. Like um, there was a Jamaican jerk salad type thing and a mango and salsa maybe salad or something. There were some flavors that I just, I wouldn't choose to eat on a normal basis. So I had to skip those and kind of um, make it right with other meal plans within the, the options that I had. So that was okay, but that was a little bit difficult. The last 10 days um, where I followed his, his concept of G-bombs, which would be very nutritarian and not necessarily exactly the 10 and 20 challenge, but following the same principles, so I was eating greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds, was super simple, like super, super easy. You just make sure that everything that you eat has a few of those things in it. Like in the morning breakfast would have oats and berries and um, either flax seeds or pecans or something along those lines. So you get your the last two letters, the B and the S, and then whatever other meals you're having, greens are easy to get, onions are easy to get, um, beans or legumes are easy to get. The mushrooms, I had a little bit of a hard time sneaking into stuff. When I was cooking stewish type things, I'd get the enoki mushrooms in there, no problems. That was super easy for me because I love them. Um, but regular mushrooms and I, nee. I don't hate them, but I don't, nee. So if you're a big mushroom fan, that would probably be very easy. So three and a half stars, simply because um, the first part was challenging. It really was a little bit more difficult, but towards the end when I was able to just just loosen it up a little bit and make sure that I was following his principles of what foods are nutritarian dense and how to eat them, that type of thing. That worked out really well. And um, you could eat the foods that you were eating already were greens, beans, onions, that type of thing. So you could eat those and have as much of that meal as you wanted to without worrying about a serving size because those were the free foods that you could eat anyway. So have some more cabbage no big deal you know have have a few more instead of eating half a cup of beans have three quarters of a cup of beans no big deal that type of thing so ease of diet was a little bit difficult in the beginning and got easier at the end so decide about three and a half stars sounds about fair all right so the reality check is is this plan sustainable is this something that you could do day in and day out until you meet a goal weight and then continue to do to maintain your goal weight. Um, I gave the sustainability factor of four stars because I actually do think this is something that could be totally doable. Uh, Nutritarian lifestyle is actually quite, quite easy to obtain. It's really not difficult to do. Like I said in the beginning, I did miss rice, but at the same time, um, towards the end, I figured out that you put oat groats into stew and into soups and you let it sit and it soaked up all the liquid and you had this lush, delicious wonderfulness. Okay, well that's pretty awesome. Didn't know that before, to be honest with you. I'd never actually put an oat groat in soup before this particular challenge. So that was neat. Um, I would call this highly doable. There's so many different greens that you could choose from. There's so many different beans or legume options that you could pick from. Obviously onions are easy to add to just about anything. Mushrooms, I could I could do better. I could add more mushrooms to things. Um, it would be easier if I bought them pre-chopped rather than buying them in their whole little button shape and chopping them myself. Um, 
so that the berries and seeds, you just make it, make an effort to get them in your diet. You can have them fresh, you can have them frozen, you can have them in a smoothie, it doesn't really matter, just so long as you get them in you. So sustainability wise, this would definitely be something that you could do on a real regular basis. And then if maybe once every two weeks or once a week, you wanted to have a meal that was not on this particular plan where you said, okay, for me, I'm going to have vegan sushi, I'm gonna have it once a week, Usually we have it twice, once every two weeks, but I'm gonna have it once a week and that's not nutrient dense and I get that. Well, I'm gonna make sure the other meals that I have that day are super nutrient dense and then I'm going to eat really healthy the rest of the week. So I think that this actually would be quite sustainable. I don't think you would wanna follow this 100% of the time because somebody never being allowed to have a spaghetti noodle again might be difficult for some. If you're not allowed to have white rice in something that maybe is a stir fry is your favorite meal, that might be a little bit difficult. So there are some foods that you um, do exclude, but I don't think that that would make this plan undoable. I think that that would just have to qualify as being your, well, I'm going to have this and it's gonna be okay. And I'm just going to be really super healthy the rest of the week. So I think it is quite sustainable. I think this is something that's doable, four stars. So overall rating, if you add all your stars together and divide it out, the diet plan gets, a, this particular challenge gets about 80%. So that's actually really awesome. That's really good. I think that quantity wise, you guys won't be hungry. Quality of food is not, it's really quite doable. There might be one or two things that you don't have that you might find that you miss. Maybe it's your whole wheat bread or maybe it's your white rice or maybe it's a, a white potato that you like to make homemade french fries that don't have any oil. Something along those lines might be not part of the meal plan that you have to consider. Um, effectiveness, I lost more weight on this challenge than I did on any of the others so that is something that is totally worth keeping in mind if that is your goal. It really wasn't that difficult and especially once I switched over to just focusing on G-bombs that made it so much easier so getting you know you just add a little bit of flavors to the different G-bomb foods and you're following a nutritarian lifestyle that really was quite easy I do think this would be something that would be sustainable for most people I think this is something you could do on a real regular basis and be very happy with it so overall rating four stars guys this one worked out really well so I'm I'm definitely able to say if you wanted to try one of the challenges that I've done, this would be high on my list of things to suggest that you might try. So hope you guys enjoyed this challenge as much as I did. This one wasn't really that difficult. I've had some in the past that I was like, I don't think I can do this. And this one was not like that at all. So yeah, this was a good one. Give this one a shot. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you guys do on this challenge. And I hope you are having a fabulous time with whatever it is that you're doing in life. So take care. We'll talk to you again soon.